Welcome to the second screencast on tangent planes to surfaces. And in this case, I want to consider a different kind of problem given by this, this kind of example. What we're told is that the following two curves are known to lie on some surface S. And these two curves are given uh, in parametric form, R1 and R2 of T. And these are curves in R3. They're told, we're told that they lie on some surface S. And what we're asked to do is find the equation for the tangent plane to the surface at some point where the um, where the curves intersect. Here I've sketched the two curves. This is uh, R1 and this is R2. It may be a bit difficult to see the perspective. I'll say a bit more about that in a second. But there are in fact infinitely many surfaces uh, for which uh, these curves would lie on the surface. Um, it turns out that I've chosen these curves, in fact, uh, based on the previous ellipsoid. These, these curves happen to lie on on the ellipsoid we considered in the previous um, example, but you're not allowed to use that information. You're just given the curves, and for any surface that for um, having these curves on uh, on it, you should be able to compute this tangent plane. So, and it, oh, again, just let me say, so th this curve, this curve here, um, again, in terms thinking in terms of the actual ellipsoid, is 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 a curve at constant z value on the ellipsoid. So this is the the r1. So that's at a fixed uh, z on the ellipsoid. And this is a curve at constant x, constant x on the ellipsoid, and it's this one. Again, you're not allowed to use the information that this that these lie on the ellipsoid uh, explicitly. So how do you address this problem? Well, what you do is you need to you must generate two tangent vectors. That's what you're going to use. You have essentially you have th these curves, and from this you're going to generate um, tangent vectors v1 and v2. And uh, even before I do the algebra, let me just go ahead and sketch them on here. The R1 parameterization is going to give you a tangent vector to, to that to the curve at this point. That will be V1. And the R2 parameterization is going to give you a tangent vector to the R2 parameterization. And that will be my V2. And perhaps I didn't say, uh, it was obvious to me, that this point of intersection is the same point we considered before. This particular point here is uh, given by 2, 1, minus 3. And that's the point. All right, so now what you're going to do though is you're you're not going to use the the gradient information the gradient of some function of three variables you're going to use uh, this tangent information that's the uh, the point I want to emphasize here so let's uh, let's just do it we're going to compute we're going to start with r1 let's uh, differentiate it derivative of cosine is minus sine 2 minus root 2 sine t a derivative of sine is cosine and 0 and so let's evaluate that at this point pi on 4 and that'll give us minus 2, 1, 0. So that's our vector v1. Okay, that's approximately a good perspective of this vector, I would say. We can then do the other one. r2 prime is equal to, let me screw up here, 0, root 2, cosine, 3, square root of 2, sine t. And then we're going to evaluate that again at pi on 4. That will give me 0, 1, 3, and that will be my v2. So let me first next say how you shouldn't, what you shouldn't do. But what you shouldn't do is then proceed to say, all right, well, here's my, uh, here's my plane, my uh, tangent plane then. These are two vectors, this v1 and this v2 are two vectors uh, in the plane. So starting from this point x0, let's call this point x0, that's a good thing to call it. I can construct any point on the plane as x0 plus alpha, some amount of v1 plus some amount of v2, where uh, alpha, beta, or h real, so in R2 to collectively. The thing is, is so this isn't, uh, this involves these two parameters, uh, and this, this really isn't what, I, what one normally means by find the equation for the tangent plane, okay? You want a, 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 an equation involving only x, y, z, and um, numbers that you get from v1 and v2. So the point is, this, this is um, not what you want to do. What you want to do, I think I can put it in over here, is instead, once you've constructed v1 and v2, is you want to generate uh, a normal vector. In fact, the algebra would even be easier to generate normal vector n equal v1 cross v2. And then we will have reduced it to the previous, uh, the, uh, the, the previous example in the previous screencast. So what is v1? v1 is minus 2, 1, 0. V2 is 0, 1, 3, I, J, K. So far, I don't seem to have made any mistakes. So doing that cross product, blup, blup, that looks like I get a 3I, blup, blup, 6J, 
rip, rip, uh, looks like a minus 2k. I'm going to go ahead and write this down without the ijk's 3, 6, minus 2. Now, if you go back and look at, uh, at the previous calculation, you'll see that this, in fact, is uh, exactly 3 times grad f from before. So that's good. Since we know, um, since we know what the answer is going to be, because uh, the problem is really the same surface, or could be the same surface as, as the previous case. We expect the, the tangent uh, plane to be exactly the same tangent plane we previously computed. So um, this normal vector uh, had better be proportional to the gradient uh, of the function. That is to say, this is the previous normal vector, and this is the current normal vector. They're simply related by a, by a factor of 3, so they point in the same direction. So the tangent plane, of course, will be the same. Uh, we don't really need to do this, uh, but I mean, we don't need to do this because we already know the answer from the last time, but let's go ahead and do it. What you would do then is you take, okay, so what's the equation for the tangent plane? Then it's n dot x minus x naught, as always, equals zero. I have my n, and so that's, um, that's going to be 3, 6, minus 2, dot, get x minus 2, y minus 1, z plus 3, equal 0, 3x minus 2 plus 6y minus 1 minus 2z plus 3, and I ran out of room, equal 0, which is the same as last time. So that is the, uh, that is the tangent plane. Let me just make this 3 bigger, sorry to obsess. All right, so what, I, what is it I want to emphasize? What I want to emphasize is just that th th this difference of, of, of approach, um, difference of perspective, where you're given tangent information to the surface rather than um, normal information directly through the gradient of a, of a function. Um, and you, you're going to have to construct tangent vectors. And since the tangent vectors lie in the tangent plane, from the tangent information, from this tangent information, you can construct the tangent plane. But I want to emphasize the way to do it is to get these two vectors, get the two tangent vectors, then immediately construct a normal vector and use this very simple, use this very simple relation to get your answer. So get tangent vectors, then immediately get the normal vector, and then you can just plug it into this, and you'll be very happy that you did that.